Since the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, 1.7 million Americans have been infected with HIV. Worldwide, more than 35 million people are infected. Of these, over 3 million are under the age of 15. We hear from Kevin Robert Frost, the CEO of AMFAR, one of the world's leading nonprofit organizations dedicated to the support of AIDS research. He tells us some history of the organization, as well as the road to a cure for HIV worldwide. AMFAR is the foundation for AIDS research. We're one of the oldest AIDS organizations in America. We actually started in 1983 as the AIDS Medical Foundation. And then in 1985, we merged with a West Coast group, uh, the National AIDS Research Foundation, and together we formed AMFAR, which then was the American Foundation for AIDS Research. But as the epidemic became more global and our work became more global, we became the Foundation for AIDS Research, but we've kept the AMFAR acronym. We are, at our heart, a biomedical research foundation. AMFAR raises money, most of it in the private sector, and we use that money to fund some of the best research going on with the best scientists, both here in the U.S. and around the world. Dr. Rowena Johnston discusses what is unique about AMFAR grants. AMFAR has two key strengths in how we do our research program, and one is that we can turn around grant funding incredibly quickly. So this is a, a very fast moving field of research. A lot of scientists are finding new discoveries every day. When you get an AMFAR grant, that can be turned around in a month so that you can start working on the most pressing problem right away. And the other really key strength of AMFAR's research program is that we can direct the research. We have an overview of all of the research efforts that are going on specifically guided towards a cure for HIV. And with that knowledge in hand, we can pick the projects that really make the most sense to make sure that our efforts are covering really every promising angle to find a cure for HIV. Kevin Frost tells us about AMFAR's Countdown to a Cure initiative. As the research around HIV cure has begun to mature, we really felt here at AMFAR that it was time to do something new, something really innovative, and that was a chance to invest in that research in several different ways, but ultimately to get us to the scientific foundation for a cure. Our job here at AMFAR is the science, and the Countdown to a Cure initiative puts us on the clock. It says we're going to build the scientific foundation for a cure by the end of 2020. So what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean a cure for everybody. In fact, a cure for everybody will take much, much longer. Our job, however, is to figure out if we can put together the disparate pieces of the science, which are just now maturing, and build that foundation upon which we will get to a cure for everyone. The scientific basis of a cure means that we're going to have enough of the pieces put together that we can begin to cure some of the people some of the time. And the history of medicine is that we take things which are complex, difficult, and expensive, and we make them simpler and easier to do and less expensive. And we think that's the road that the, the cure is going to travel on. We think that in order to get there, we've got to start putting the pieces together. And that's really what the countdown is about. It's about getting those pieces together so that we can start to cure people on a replicable basis. We've announced an initial investment in the Countdown to a Cure initiative of $100 million over five years. So we think with that $100 million, we can get to the end of 2020 with the scientific basis of a cure. But that's just the start. Um, the response to the, to the initiative has really been overwhelming. And in fact, we're hoping that we may even be able to ratchet up those investments further in the near future. Dr. Johnston discusses the challenges to finding a cure for HIV. The really difficult part about curing HIV is what we call the persistent reservoir. So any person in the world who's HIV positive who might be taking antiretroviral therapy, that antiretroviral therapy will not get rid of every last piece of virus in that person's body. And the immune system can't clear it either. And so what you're left with is a, a very small number of cells that have HIV inside them that you cannot attack with the immune system, that you cannot attack with antiretroviral therapy, but that HIV is still there. One of the very interesting cases on this road towards cure that happened a couple of years ago, and this is the case of the Mississippi child. Um, this was a child, an infant who was born in Mississippi, and uh, her mother had not been taking antiretroviral therapy during pregnancy. 
the infant acquired HIV infection, but was treated 30 hours after birth. She started antiretroviral treatment. And after about 15 or 18 months of age, against medical advice, the infant stopped taking antiretroviral therapy. And when she came back into medical care, all the doctors were very surprised that there was no virus evident. All of our previous experience had shown that if you stop taking antiretroviral therapy, that virus will come roaring back and, and reignite the infection throughout your entire body. That had not happened in this infant. And AMFAR had put together a group of researchers to look into cases exactly like this. We had assembled a group of experts who knew how to use all kinds of different tests to find very, very low levels of virus. And every one of those experts was unable to find any virus in this infant. And so we were cautiously optimistic that maybe this infant has been cured of HIV. And yet, two years later, the virus did in fact come back. And I think that really highlights the challenge and really shows us what we don't yet have well enough perfected, and that is how do we measure whether or not there's any virus there. To, proving a negative in any field of endeavor is really a very difficult thing. More with Kevin Robert Frost and Dr. Rowena Johnston and The Road to a Cure when we return. We return with Dr. Rowena Johnston, who tells us about a significant breakthrough in HIV research. There have been some really interesting and important recent breakthroughs in HIV research that are really driving how the field is looking at what the challenges are and how we're going to address HIV. There's been an enormous sea change in the optimism that researchers are feeling for our ability to cure HIV. And that came about from the case of the so-called Berlin patient. And this was a, an American man living in Berlin who had HIV and his HIV was very well controlled on HIV medicines until he got leukemia. And it was a kind of leukemia that needed to be treated with a stem cell transplant. And when he went to his doctor for the stem cell transplant, the doctor had made a very, very clever decision, and that is to find a donor who had a particular genetic mutation called CCR5 Delta 32. And people who have that genetic mutation are really almost entirely resistant to HIV. And so the German doctor thought, well, let's see what happens if we transplant our Berlin patient with this tissue from a person with a genetic deletion. Can we, what effect will that have on his HIV? And that happened in 2008, and ever since then, the Berlin patient has not had to have any more cancer therapy, and he's no longer needing to take HIV therapy. And the common consensus is he's cured of HIV. This is an enormous, enormously important case in HIV because really before that nobody thought that curing HIV was going to be possible. This single case alone has told us that we can cure HIV and there are, it's an enormous number of people now working on how are we going to cure HIV for everybody around the world. Ending the epidemic means not just having the cure, but it means delivering the cure. And we recognize that that process, delivering a cure, delivering a vaccine, that's going to take a long time and a lot of resources. But as I said before, we're in the science business. Our job is the science. We want to build the understanding of the science that gets us to a cure. Then delivering that is a whole other set of problems, but ones that we think can also be overcome, just needing a little more time. I would say that the things we're going after are cutting edge. I think AMFAR is able, with our resources, to reach farther out on that limb, if you will. We can crawl much further out and look for the ideas that are the most innovative, look for the ideas that are really out there on the edge and fund those, knowing and accepting that a lot of those ideas are going to fail. But even failed ideas teach us something. Even Thomas Edison said it took him a thousand tries to invent the light bulb, but the first 999 taught him how not to do it. And that's just as important as understanding how to do something. We think the HIV cure is going to be the same way. We're out there investing in a lot of ideas that we know are going to fail, but even ideas that don't work teach us and bring us a little closer to ideas that do. Kevin Robert Frost tells us how rewarding it is to be part of this effort as CEO of AMFAR. Leading this organization and leading the people who work here has been the greatest privilege of my life. I'm here because I recognize the enormity of both the responsibility but also the privilege of being a part of an organization whose very purpose, whose whole reason for existing 
is to make the world a better place. If I can play a small part in that, how could I ever consider doing anything else?